Hi, my name is EJ O'Donnell Lines. I'm a project engineer too for Mortensen Construction. Um, and right now we're at the northwest corner of the Extreme Arena job. So excited to be here. As a kid growing up I always wanted to be a race car driver like that was the dream um, and when I got into high school I you know that never panned out for me when I was younger and um, realized you know I got to probably do something else um, and I've just always really loved problem solving that was something I, I always you know found enjoyable when I was in school uh, started looking into engineering and then I wasn't sure right out of high school what kind of engineering I wanted to do so I spent a year at a private school called Morningside College in Sioux City where I'm from and then transferred to Iowa State and it worked out perfect for me you know um, I decided construction engineering so I have a four-year bachelor degree turned around and I, I love what I do every day I'm happy to come to work and it's really exciting at the end of the day getting to see um, you know say that you are a part of making something like Extreme Arena come together. As a construction engineering student, you take all of the basic engineering classes. So you have to take calculus and physics and chemistry, all of those core, you know, knowledge-based classes. And then for construction, we have specific classes that talk you through, here's how you go through scheduling a project. Here's how we do estimating. Um, you do some more comprehensive overall classes that help to try and um, kind of combine everything together towards the end of your schooling. We took steel design, concrete design, mechanical and electrical system design, so that we kind of have a really broad understanding of all the parts and pieces that go into making a facility like this come to fruition. Um, and then as far as other like elective type courses, you have speci you had specific like sectors you could take them in. So you had to have like a math elective. So I chose calculus three, or um, you had to take differential equations. And then um, within construction, there were there's different paths that you could take. You could go down a heavy civil path where you were doing roadway construction. Um, I was in a, the building path which prepares me for stuff like this with commercial construction. And then there was also a mechanical and electrical emphasis, but those people usually end up going in to more of a design side of things for, um, for buildings like this. My favorite class in college was probably a class called uh, Connie 241. It was buildings and material, the materials and methods. So basically we just learned about a ton of different types of buildings and the types of materials that go into those different types of buildings. So like here on the arena, we have two different types of structures that get combined into one. We have a what's called a pre-engineered metal building. Um, so that's the main arena behind us with uh, behind me with all the, the main girders that jump across. And then behind us here, we've got more of what we call a conventional steel structure, and it all ties together, but those are two different kind of types of buildings that, that we've managed to combine together with our design team and our owner to try and create the most cost-effective solution we could for this building. It really varies day to day. Um, but for me, typically I'll spend about half of my day out on site, um, helping solve problems in the field, helping to make sure that, you know, the subcontractors I'm responsible for have all the answers that they need. Um, and then the other half of my day is spent back in the office where we're planning for what's up, what's coming next, what's next week, what's two weeks out for us. Um, trying to make sure, again, that we've got all the questions answered we need so that the guys that are out here in the field putting work in place really have, um, have that ability to do so, so that they're not interrupted and always stop and asking us questions. So when we're looking out over the main bowl of the arena right now, um, right below us, these guys are installing all the seats. So we have to come through and install the backs and pads and screw everything together. So that's kind of the noise you hear there. We've got all these lifts out here in the, in the center of the bowl that nobody's using right now, but we use those to get up into the roof structure to, so we can put up conduit different equipment, lights that have to go into this type of facility. You can see the duct um, that we've got out over the main bowl, so they've got to put all that stuff in. And they use these man lifts to get up and be able to do that work at an elevated surface. 
We've also got all the material that's kind of scattered around here is for the seating guys and the duck guys right now, but each kind of project or piece of the project comes in in phases. So like two weeks ago, we had our telescopic bleacher guy here and he went around the whole bowl and did all of his stuff. And then we pull these guys in. Um, it's really a cool sequence to be able to see step by step. Across the whole backside of here, we see all the suites and the clubs that are gonna be kind of the higher dollar value seats at the end of the day. Um, this arena for a hockey event will hold about 5,000 people. Um, and then for a concert, an end stage concert, we can get close to 7,000 in this facility. I was fortunate enough to be on this project since um, the very beginning of it. So I was involved in all of the like 3D modeling that we do on the front end of things. So all the mechanical and electrical systems that you guys don't really get to see behind the scenes. Um, we use a 3D software where we all put it into the same model um, and we basically build the whole building virtually with all of the steel, all the mechanical and electrical systems so that we can make sure everything fits. That really helps us on the construction side of things because a building like this 20, 30, 40 years ago might have taken two and a half, three years to build. And for this project at Extreme Arena, we've had a 19 month schedule that we've been able to keep um, the whole way through the project with all the challenges that we faced simply because we already know where everything's gonna go and there's a lot less problems you have to figure out here in the field compared to um, we can figure those out on the front end of things with our software. He's pulling wire for some fire alarm devices. So at the end of the day, you see the wire sticking out of the wall. That'll get terminated, um, wired up into a fire alarm speaker strobe so that when the fire alarm goes off, you'll see that light flash and you'll hear the sound out of that, um, telling people, hey, get out of the building. You know, it's not safe to be here anymore. So this is the field house. Uh, we'll have five basketball courts in here running east and west throughout this space. Um, we can tie in pretty well with the arena and kind of run back and forth pretty well. Um, and the whole facility all together can hold eight basketball courts for a big tournament or anything like that at the end of the day. So in the suites, uh, really cool space here because you can see we've got paint on the walls, carpet on the floor. We've got some drink rails going in. Uh, we've got cabinets behind us here. So um, really a cool space that you can visualize what this space is gonna be for the owner at the end of the day. A few things we talked about early on were different options for how to make the color of the seats. Would they look at all yellow or all black? Um, they looked at like the first bottom three rows being a gold color. And what they ended up with was going with the gold color um, dispersed throughout. So 10% of our seats are gold and it, it really uh, was a good choice by the owner. It looks really great here as things are coming together. For Mortensen Construction, we're a really large construction firm. We have 5,000 office workers, so people like me, people up at our headquarter office that make all that happen. And then we have about 5,000 uh, craft workers as well. Um, so those are the guys that, that are hired by Mortensen that we have out in the field doing this. On this project, we've oriented about six, 600 people for this job alone. So 600 different construction workers have come to the site here and had to be orientated to be on site and help build this project. Mortensen, we're a business like any other business. So while I'm on the operation side of things, you know, building buildings or um, my counterparts, we have a wind group, a solar group where we build, we are responsible for building actual buildings and structures that, you know, everybody gets to see at the end of the day. There's still all those behind the scenes things. We've got a lot of people in safety, a lot of people doing business development, um, trying to go find the next job, right? Chase work for us. Um, there's all of the headquarters staff, like accounting, um, IT, all those, all those different pieces that go into every single business. Thanks for joining us today, Skate Campers. Thanks for uh, being here with us at Extreme Arena and excited to be able to show you the place around.